Today we're going to talk about a circuit known as the SR latch. But before we get into that, let's review the truth table of the NOR gate. So if you remember, this is the electrical symbol for the NOR gate. We have inputs A and B with the output, which we'll call C. Now, the way I remember this particular truth table is I think about the OR gate. If you remember for the OR gate, if A or B is 1, C will be 1. The NOR gate is just the opposite. If A or B is 1, C will be 0. So the only time the output is 1 is if A and B are both 0. For all other situations, the output will be 0. So that's the truth table for the NOR gate. Now the SR latch is composed of two NOR gates with the output of each NOR gate connected to the input of the other NOR gate. And I'm going to draw the circuit for that as well. Now let's begin by drawing two NOR gates. The input for the first NOR gate, this is the reset input. And one of the inputs for the other NOR gate, this is the set input, which we'll call S. Now the input of the top NOR gate is going to go to the output of the one on the bottom, the other NOR gate. And the same is true for the NOR gate on the bottom. Its input will be attached to the output of the other NOR gate. Because we're connecting the output of one NOR gate to the input of the other, what we have is a, sequ a sequential circuit. The NOR gate that I drew in the beginning with this particular truth table that is a combinational circuit. What that means is that the output is directly dependent on the input in its current state. So the output depends on the present input. If A and B are zero, the output will always be one. The output is directly dependent on the input at that instant in time. That's a combinational circuit. Whatever the input is, the output is directly determined by the input. The SR latch is different. The output of the SR latch does depend on the input, but it also depends on the past history of the circuit. So it doesn't just depend on the present input values, but also the past values of the circuit, the past output and input values of the circuit as well. So in that case, this circuit has memory because it's a sequential circuit. And we're going to illustrate this throughout the video. So the output here, we're going to call it Q, and the other one, Q bar. Now let's draw the truth table for the SR latch. So we have S, R, and the output. So when S and R has a value of zero, there's going to be no change in the output. When S is set to one and R is zero, what's happening is you're setting the output Q to one. When S is 0 and R is 1, 
what you're doing is you're resetting the output from the state q equals 1 to the state q equal 0. I'm running out of space here. Finally, if you apply a 1, or if you turn on both the set and the reset button, if you were to connect it using the push button, these two states are not allowed. And we'll talk about that as well. So those are some notes that you may want to write down um, as we go through this video. Now, imagine building this circuit using push buttons, that is momentary push buttons for R and S. So when we press the button, let's say for S, S will have a value of one, it's on the on state. Once we release the push button, S will be set back to zero. So kind of have that in your imagination or in your thoughts right now. Now, once we power this circuit, Q and Q bar, they're going to have a value. Depending on which one is faster, Q could be set to zero initially, Q bar could be set to one or vice versa. However, because these are inverted values, they should be opposite to one another. So we're gonna assume that once we power this circuit, Q will have an initial value of zero and Q bar will have an initial value of one. And because we haven't applied a signal to the input, initially R is going to be zero and S is going to be zero as well. And I'm going to need more space than this, so let's put S right here. So right now, let's write down what we have. R is zero. S is zero, and at this instant of time, before you do anything, Q is zero, and Q bar is zero as well. So now we're gonna apply a signal to S. We're gonna push the button on S. So R is still gonna be zero, but now S is set to one. So what's gonna happen to Q and Q bar when S is set to one? So let's change this value from 0 to 1. Now, before any change, Q was 0. So the input signal at the second NOR gate on the bottom is 0 because they're connected. So 0 and 1 for NOR gate, or 1 and 0, that's going to give us an output of 0. So Q bar is going to change from 1 to 0. Now, once Q bar changes to zero, that affects the input signal for the top NOR gate. So now that is at zero. Zero and zero will give us an output of one. So Q changes from zero to one. So notice what just happened here. Right now, the conditions that we have correspond to this one here. Because we apply a signal to S, we push the S button, we have set Q to 1. So Q changed from 0 to 1. Keep that in mind. So right now, we're still holding down the push button for S. We're still holding the S button. But what's going to happen when we release the S button? When we let go of the push button, S it's going to lose its signal. So it's going to go from 1 back to 0. So we haven't done anything with R. R is still 0. We release the push button on S, so S goes back to 0. What happens to Q and Q bar when S goes back to 0, once we let go of that push button? So let's change S to 0 here. Q was 1. So this one is going to feed into this NOR gate. And so we have 0, 1. 
0, 1 will give us an output of 0. So Q bar remains 0. It doesn't change. This 0 goes here to the top NOR gate. R is still 0. 0 and 0 will still give us 1. So Q remains at 1. Now let's think about what this means. We release the set button and there was no change in the output. We're back to R and S being zero and the output did not change. The output remained the same. We have set Q to one when we hit the S button. So now the output is latched to that value. So notice how this is a sequential circuit. The output is not completely dependent on the input. It also depends on the past history. Because here, when the input for R and S was zero, the output of Q was zero. Now in our third case, the input is the same. R and S are both zero, but Q is not zero. This time Q is one. So thus, the output of this kind of circuit is not completely dependent on the input. It also depends on the history of the output and the input as well. So that makes this circuit a sequential circuit and not a combinational circuit, where the output is completely dependent on the input. So in this case, this circuit has memory. It remembers its original state before we release the set button. Now, it's going to remain on that state unless we hit the reset button. So if we push down on the set button again, if we apply a 1 to S, Q is not going to change. So let's put a 1 here. 1 and 1 will give us 0. So Q bar remains at 0. This 0 goes back here. 0 and 0 will give us a 1. So Q remains at 1. So at this point, the output has been latched to 1. So regardless if we release the set button or if we push the set button, Q is going to retain its output. It's going to stay at 1. Now, what I'm going to do is first, starting from this stage, I'm going to release the set button. Once I release the set button, it's going to go back to this stage where R and S is 0. So Q is going to still remain at 1 and Q bar is going to be 0. So after releasing the set button, we're back at this level. S is 0, Q is still 1, and Q bar is 0. Now, after I release the set button, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the R button. So before I push the R button, Q and Q bar is still in this state. But now when I push the R button, it's going to change. So we need to get the new Q and Q bar values. So S is back at zero. We release the set button. And then in that, after that, we're going to press the reset button. So I'm going to put a one here. So before we press the reset button, Q is one. So we have a one and a zero, which means Q bar is zero. And now we have a zero in this NOR gate. But R is 1, so 1 and 0 will give us a 0 at the output of the top NOR gate. So Q now changes to 0. Now once Q changed, that's going to affect Q bar. So this 0 is going to be applied to the bottom NOR gate. 
So let's change this from 1 to 0. So we have 0 and 0, which will give us a 1. So Q bar is going to change to 1. OK, so now let's talk about this. We've pushed a reset button. R is 1. Now Q have been resetted to 0. Because initially it was at 0. Once we hit the set button, it went to 1. Now that we hit the reset button, we reset it back to its original state to when it's 0. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to release the reset button. Once we release the reset button, R is going to go from 1 to 0 now that R is off. So let's put a 0 here. Q bar is 1 before we release the R button. So we have a 1 here. That's going to make this a 1. Zero and one gives us zero. So Q remains at zero. This is going to put a zero on the other input. Zero and zero gives us one. So Q remains at zero. Q bar remains at one. So once we release the reset button going from one to zero, Q doesn't change. It retains its previous value after we hit the reset button. So even though the input changed, the output did not change. But we can see the truthfulness of this truth table. As we see, when R and S are both zero, there's no change in the output. Q remained the same. It stayed at zero. And in the beginning, when we set S to 1, Q was set to 1. It was originally 0, but it changed to 1, and it stayed at 1. It latched to that value. When we hit the reset button, Q was now latched to 0. It went from 1 to 0. So make sure you understand that. When you apply no signals to R and S, the output doesn't change. When you hit the set button, you set Q to 1. When you hit the reset button, you reset it back to 0. Now, what happens if we press both the set and the reset button at the same time? Let's apply a 1 to S and R from this current state. So R is now a 1. Previously, Q bar was 1, so that gives this an input of 1. 1 and 1 will give an output of 0. So this is going to stay at 0 for now. This 0 goes here. Now S is also 1. And when you have a 0 and a 1, the output is 0. So that changes Q bar to 0. Now let's follow this 0 to see if there's any further changes. So this 1 becomes a 0. So that's a 1, that's a 0. 1 and 0 is 0, so this Q remains 0. So notice what's happening here. When we apply a 1, or when we push both the set and the reset button and hold it down, Q and Q bar, they're both 0. So if you were to put an LED connected to a resistor, connected to ground at Q and Q bar, both LEDs will be off. So why is this not allowed? Well, for one thing, it defies the basic notation of Q and Q bar. Q and Q bar are complements of each other. And as complements, they should not be equal to each other. However, for this situation, it turns out that they are equal to each other, even though by convention, they shouldn't be. So. 
this situation, this set of input conditions is not allowed. For the SR latch, you shouldn't be pushing down both S and R buttons, even though you could, then both LEDs will be off. When it does, it kind of like breaks the rule for the circuit where Q shouldn't be equal to Q bar. So that's what happens. So that's it for this video. Hopefully gave you a good basic introduction into the SR latch and how it works. So thanks for watching.